Where do we start? This woman, Ngozi Fulani, which isn't her real name, by the way, it's actually Marlene Headley, went to the palace event dressed like this. Now, forget where do you come from in Africa. More like what planet? What is going on with her hair? I mean, seriously, I've got some bad wigs that I wear on purpose, by the way, to get a reaction. But that is another level. Apparently, Lady Hussey, our dearly departed Queen's lady-in-waiting for some 60 years, moved and goes his hair out of the way, brave move, so she could see a name badge, which is clearly not a traditional British name, which is what I suspect, alongside the outfit, sparked her intrigue and this totally unverified exchange. We don't even know whether it's true, but let, let's go with it. Lady, lady, the lady said, uh, where are you from? Miss Falani says, Sister Space. So where do you come from? Miss Falani says, we're based in Hackney. No, no, what part of Africa do you come from? OK, so there's a clue here. Because Miss Falani says, I don't know. They didn't leave any records. All right, so that, that's rude, right? That, that is already rude. Well, Miss Lady says, well, you must know where you're from. I spent time in France. Where are you from? Now, Lady Helsey's obviously trying to help her out. Miss Villani says, here, UK. No, but what nationality are you? So at this point, Ngozi hasn't actually said whether she is British or not. She said she's here in the UK. It could mean that she's from Hackney. I mean, this is ridiculous. And somehow, somehow Marlene, sorry, uh, what's the face, has the transcript of the conversation. Did she record it? Now she's everywhere and claiming racism. She said the exchange left her feeling traumatised. What? She runs a domestic abuse charity? Come on! What I find more traumatising is the way she made a meal out of answering a pretty standard question posed by an 83-year-old woman about her heritage. Asking someone where they're from is possibly, possibly the most common global icebreaker question ever. And Ngozi told GB News... This. But what sealed it for me is when she said, oh, I can see I'm going to have a challenge with you. So that already shows me you're trying to get somewhere. And then after me explaining for I don't know how many times, lady, I'm born here, I'm British, right? Yeah, but where are your people from? My, my people. So don't forget the, the, uh, the context, domestic abuse. I'm invited here to talk about that. This is going on for five or six minutes too long and then she finishes when she's learned that my parents came here in the 50s as part of the Windrush generation she then said ah oh, I knew we'd get there in the end so it was something she was driving at it's not acceptable well yes she was driving at it she started at the beginning with where you're from and you just evaded it for ages it went on for five minutes well, that's what you're saying. Look, this is the same woman who accused Camilla and Charles of domestic violence towards Meghan in a tweet, which is a shocking unproven claim, a bit like Meghan's claim about racism towards the unborn child. In March 2021, Ngozi sent this tweet. Our charity supports black women of domestic violence survivors, that's DV. I can't stay silent about this. I admire Meghan for speaking out. According to the clear definition, it seems that Meghan is a survivor of domestic violence from her in-laws. P.S. I'm glad hypocrite peers left our TV. So this is someone who already has an agenda, which is somehow being ignored. Listen to them on the established media. Uh, I mean, I'd be asking, who invited you? How did you memorise the conversation? What about the tweet? And what about your association to Black Lives Matter? It was like Oprah all over again. So the Prince of Wales, Prince William, um, made a statement saying he's inviting you to the palace to discuss all elements of your experience. Mm. Will you take up that invitation? Ngozi herself uh, described it as a violation, didn't she, that has left her feeling stunned. So how did it leave you feeling listening to it? Yeah, where is your due diligence on this woman, for goodness sake? Are you blinded by the race card? You can't even ask questions like, for example, just asking her about her own backstory. Look, Ngozi, if you're going to go out like that, dressed in traditional attire, and can't answer simple questions like, where are you from, and instead choose to go around the houses, then don't be surprised if the conversation drags. Just answer the flaming question, a question that she's clearly comfortable answering because on her bio, she gives the game away in the first few lines. And she's more than happy to ask it to those who come to her charity because you have to be of African or Caribbean heritage before she'll help you. Now, in the Telegraph, it was reported, it says that if she said, 
if you invite people to an event against domestic abuse and there are people from different demographics, I don't see the relevance of whether I'm British or not British. Uh, well, that is actually a good point, Ngozi. Why should it matter? But your charity seems to think it does. It will only help African and Caribbean people. That, to me, in itself, is slightly racist. That is what it says. This is what it says on the charity's Facebook page. Sister Space is a safe venue dedicated to African and Caribbean victims, stroke survivors of domestic and sexual abuse and is staffed and managed by volunteers. Can you imagine if the charity said only white people? I bet she'd be the first to complain. Let me see. I go to the charity, her charity. They ask me where I'm from. I say Newcastle. They ask me again. I say from GB News. Then they ask me, no, what part of Africa? I say they didn't keep a record. I'm guessing at that point she'll tell me to clear off. I wonder how many traumatised women she's turned away who don't meet her criteria. Frankly, I'm embarrassed about this woman. She's affiliated with the Black Lives Matter movement, a bunch of fraudsters who played on white guilt to extort money from the generous, trusting nature of most people, the majority of whom are not racist, and in my view, manipulating a conversation to suit her own ends at the expense of an old woman. And Gozi Fulani is a complete and utter hypocrite.